today's video, I'm going to show you a few different methods I use to help sort of up upscale and enlarge photos or AIR in Photoshop. So to cut to the chase, I've got these two images I've downloaded from Midjourney. One's a PNG, one's a JPEG. Now, uh, we can, I cannot use PNG for this, so you need to open it up, go to Save As and save a JPEG. But I'm going to drag this JPEG into Photoshop and we're going to zoom in and you can see the quality's not really that great. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to Edit and down to Preferences and then over to Camera Raw. Now I get these settings here. I want to go under file handling in particular on the left and where it says JPEG, I want to change that to automatically open all supported JPEGs. And then I click OK. From there, I can close this JPEG down, bring my folder back up. I drag my JPEG in and I get this camera raw filter box. So I can now right click on this image and click enhance. I get this little box here, which popped up on the other side and I've got super resolution ticked, which means it's actually going to increase the size of the image. So I simply click enhance and then a second image pops up over here. I can now come down, click open to open up that image and it's actually larger because it was originally 1024 by 1024 pixels and now it is 2048 by 2048 pixels. So it has actually enlarged that image. Now I'm gonna quickly cut ahead. We're gonna open up the old image and compare the two as we go. Okay, so now I'm showing the original image and this is the enhanced image now. You might not be able to see the difference here, but if I zoom in on the eye, this is the enhanced image and this is the original image. You can see how much bigger the pixels are when I switch from one to the other. So it has done a pretty decent job of enhancing that image. So it's not too bad, but it's still not quite as good as we'd like it to be. I'm just going to delete this layer. Another thing that we can do is to simply use the image size. So if I go up here to image and image size, I can upscale the image size here. This is actually less effective than the enhanced, but we're just gonna go here and go up to say 3500. At the moment we sit on nearest neighbor, which will not enhance it at all, it will just enlarge it. But there's a few different things we can try. There's preserve details, preserve details too, and by cubic smoother. So if I choose by cubic smoother, it will enlarge, but soften the image a bit. You can see how it sort of softens up a little bit. If I choose preserve details, it will enlarge and sharpen However, if I choose 2.0, it sharpens some areas and blurs other, others and is a little bit more intelligent. So by enlarging using Preserve Details 2.0, you can also enlarge an image further. And now this is what we have. So although the image is larger, if I zoom in one to one, you can still see it's a little pixelated, it's a little bit fuzzy, and it's not quite what we want. So what I'm actually gonna do now is zoom out a little bit here. And what I could do is I'm going to take this background layer, I'm going to drag to the plus symbol to copy it, so I have a second layer I can work on. And the reason I wanna do this is because I wanna apply some, some filters and things to this layer. If I wanna make it non-destructive, so that way I can go back and change these things, I can right click, convert to smart object, and I've converted that layer to a smart object. So now I wanna to go to filter, stylize, and oil paint. And what oil paint does is it actually really, it does soften things up. And this is where it'll start to possibly not work as well as you might want it to. But if I go to oil paint, I can at least adjust some of these settings. So we can see the original here. When I let go, it'll show us the preview. So if I, to give you an idea of how this works, if I turn the stylization and clean this up to full, you can see how it kind of cleans up a lot of the artifacts and smooths it out, but you lose a lot of the detail. Down here, if you have lighting ticked, just untick that. You can change the scale, although that I think is actually the um, bristle detail. So what I wanna do is find a good middle ground. I wanna stylize a bit, maybe have the clean cleanliness up a bit and try and find a middle ground where things are smoothed out, but I haven't lost a ton of detail. Now, this is great for print on demand when you're producing artwork with photos, you may lose a bit of detail, but that's okay for now. We click OK. So now the image looks smooth. You can see there's less artifacts. It's smoothed out a little bit. And if I want to, because we've converted it to a smart object, I can double click on oil paint and I can clean it up even further. I can see this here is still not quite as clean as I'd like. I can clean it up a bit more. And now there's no detail added, but the image is much smoother. The problem is that the edges are probably still not quite, they're quite a little bit soft. And maybe there's some areas that you wanna sort of play with. 
But uh, for now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this original layer again and copy it. I'm going to move it above this layer. So this is going to be the oil paint layer. This is going to be what we call, oh, this is called a sharpen layer. And I'm going to go to filter, other, and high pass. And you'll see this a little bit of detail there. If I turn it up, slowly some of the edges of this will actually appear. And I click OK. And now if I actually go to overlay in my layer, layer blending modes, it creates some outlines. So what we have now is three layers. We've got the original on the bottom. And I'll zoom in on the eye so we can see the difference. This is the original after we've upscaled it, enhanced it. The oil paint has cleaned it up. Sharpen will reintroduce some of those lines. So what we can now do is adjust by simply, I'll turn off this sharpen layer, click on oil paint and go down to this square with a circle and click that to add a layer mask. And what I'm gonna do is if there's areas I feel need to be sharpened, I can try to I can get my paintbrush here and by selecting this white area and choosing black, I can slowly turn off some of the softening. So if I want to sharpen up here, I can do that. Can make my brush a little bit bigger. I can sharpen up certain areas if I want to. This may introduce some artifacts, but in some areas you might find it does the job. So you can turn on or off various areas. And if some de if you've lost too much detail in one area, you can add that back in. So with the hair, you could do that if you wanted to. But then you can also go to this sharpen layer. Another thing you could do too is actually adjust the opacity or fill of this layer and find a, a nice in-between where it cleans it up but you've still got some detail there. And then I can go to this sharpen layer and I can adjust the opacity again. So we can see how the eyes are sharpening up there. I can bring it down to about say 33% if I feel like that looks the best. And again, so if I can adjust. I can now add a mask again by clicking on this. And if I want to, instead of actually painting out what's black, I can click on this layer, hit Control or Command I to invert and turn it off completely. Then if I get my brush and select white, I can decide to paint in where the sharpness needs to go. So again, the eyes, I paint this in and you can see a little bit of white appear over here. The eyes again, in certain areas where I want the detail to be picked up. So facial features, maybe again, some of the hair. So maybe I just crank that up for the hair a little bit. And you've got to sort of use your own best judgment a little bit. But this is what we've ended up with. So not too bad, it's not perfect, but not too bad. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to zoom out. Another step I like to try is now I've got this image looking like this, if I'm happy with it, what I'll do is I'll actually just control, hit Control or Command A to select everything. And I'll go to select and, sorry, edit. And I can go to copy or I can go copy merged, which copies what you currently see and not just the layer that's selected. So I click, click copy merged and then I'm going to go to edit, paste. And what I could do now is also go to filter and I can try some of these sharpen modes. You can try sharpen edges to see what results you get. If you're not happy with that, you can go to sharpen you can get a smart sharpen. Have a play with those settings so you can see how we've got the eye here. I can turn that up, increase or decrease the radius and sharpen some of these edges. I can still reduce the noise. It's a little bit too sharp. If you see this here, so I'll bring that back down. And I can sharpen things up a bit that way. The other thing I can do is even under sharpen, go filter, sharpen, and unsharp mask, and it will sort of play with the light a bit to make things appear sharper. So playing with the sharpened settings can help you also bring a bit of life into the image. So this is our image, and if I go to our original, I'm actually going to just quickly align these. Now we've got the enhanced and the original. Enhanced and original. So from a distance, it's not a huge, you can't see a distance from, from a distance. But the thing is, if you're going to say print something, it's usually the small detailed areas that really give it away. So if I zoom right in on this eye again, you can see how pixelated it is. I turn off the original, things are smooth. I come down to the nose and the mouth. While it's not perfect, it goes from smooth 
to pixelate it on the original. So it's actually not a bad method to sort of keep an image looking a certain way if you've got a decent amount of resolution to work with. Uh, these are only 1024 by 1024, so they're not huge images, but you can smooth it out so that way you get less problems when things are printed out. Now there is another step we can take if I click on this layer again, is now we can go to Filter and Neural Filters. There are other options in here, such as JPEG Artifacts. If I turn that on, it's going to process on the device. So you see it smooth things out a little bit more for us. We can change that level and play with that. Recommend that if you're going to play with this, have got it yourself. But this one I think really needed it at high. So I'm going to click OK. And once again, we can compare these layers. And we, we can also mask as well. We can go through and mask again. So you can see around the eye a little bit where it's smooth. It's, if I turn that off, there's just a little bit more sort of artifacts around the eye. If I hit this, it smooths it out a little bit more again. So once again, like I said, we do lose a little bit of detail, but the overall look of the image is there and we can continue to mask from there. So the other thing is we don't have to stop just in Photoshop, but we can use Photoshop to uh, improve something by ex combining it with external tools. This is GFP GAN. There's also another uh, simpler interface you can use. I'll link to those below along with the video. But uh, what I can do is I can use GFP GAN here in order to upscale and help make repairs to the face and combine that in Photoshop. Again, there's a video in the description if you want to learn how to do this. And this is our fixed face, but has also been upscaled. So if I close this down, and drag this into Photoshop. I can overlay this image and again mask it. The problem is that this has actually altered the um, the, fa the image itself, but it's used AI to pick up some of the errors. You can also use imagelarger.com if you want to try that. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mask this because I really liked the original look of the eyes and some of the shine on the lips. So I can go through and reintroduce some of that, or I can simply invert the whole thing. And wherever I think needs to be smoothed, I can increase my brush and just kind of like paint those areas to smooth them out. You might want a softer edge on your brush so you don't get the harsh lines that I seem to be getting here. We can really improve the hair by taking some of the information from that new image. We can combine tools like this or image larger, or if you have the uh, Gigapixel, Topaz Gigapixel AI, you can do that. And just kind of like work on some of these areas and smooth them out a little bit. So it's not identical, but we've improved the hair Maybe I also want to improve these couple of strands down here as well. So now we have our image looking pretty cool. And this is the original. Once again, if I zoom in, everything's smoothed out. We can also, again, add in the eyebrows. So you can take your time and kind of paint this up if you're really trying to improve it. And if you prefer those eyebrows to the other eyebrows, you can do that. But ultimately, the image has the same impact as before. It's just that it's not quite identical and it's actually a lot larger. At the moment, we're looking at an image that is 3,500 by 3,500. So we've gone from 1024 to 3,500 by 3,500. And if we zoom in one to one, Things aren't perfect, but they're a lot better than they were. You can see here just how much smoother things are. So like I said, it's not a perfect process, but it's one worth checking out. If you uh, found that useful, uh, please consider you know, trying it out for yourself, leave a comment. Also, if you've got other methods you use to upscale and enlarge, please let me know. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to share it with the community. So pop a comment below. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again soon.